Wow. Summer hi. Rose, Kathy Mason. Hey, hi. hi. Nice to see you guys in the conversation. Yeah. Judy, my old friend David Powell, I haven't seen in seven years. Hello, sir. And some of our regulars here on the conversation, Dana and Marco and Christopher. Great to introduce awesome. you guys. Great to introduce All you right. guys, my old we friend. We are now recording. So I should say recording in the upper right hand corner. Yeah. It does. Uh, it yes. does. Okay, very good, because I have the, the share screen on, so I can't see it. So so welcome, everyone, to the third Thursday Co-Creators Convergence Call. I'm Noelle Marshall, and over here, riding side saddle, is my beloved Bob Warner. And um, uh, we want to tell you a little bit about the Co-Creators Convergence, and then we will introduce our guest for tonight. So the Co-Creators Convergence is a Barbara Marks Hubbard legacy group. And we are devoted to sharing our gift to the shift in humanity. So Barbara always asked us, what is your gift to the shift in humanity? And the first time she asked me that, I was going, I don't know. I live in an RV. Uh, uh, how is that a gift to the shift? So Bob and I decided to use our RV and go to all 48 states and tell people about Barbara's work at Conscious Evolution. And uh, we did that in time and wrapped it all up by birth 2012. So that was December 22nd, 2012. And we've been on the path ever since. So our gathering, our group is really just co-creators. We don't have, everyone brings their gift. So there's not one thing that we say or do. All we know is that we're supporting and raising up and uh, the gifts for humanity to make this a world that works for everyone, as Barbara would always say. So but that's a little bit about the co-creators convergence. We have four ways to get together. One is coming to the third Thursday call. Welcome. Uh, one is we have a very active Facebook page, and that is uh, facebook.com slash group slash love CCC. So that'll get you to our Facebook page. We also have a uh, a website which needs to be redone, co-creatorsconvergence.com. And uh, it has six years of recordings of our third Thursday call. So Mark, you are going to be archived uh, later today. And the fourth way is we always gather together at uh, the Sunrise Ranch. We have an annual gathering and we're actually supposed to have our eighth annual gathering uh, September 9th through 13th. But I think you all know that with the, the situation, uh, with the COVID situation, it is not a time for us to travel and be in close community because you can't come to CCC and not hug and dance and laugh and share. So we um, have that postponed until next year. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce our guest, Martin Root. And Martin, I was trying to think about where we met you, and I believe it was in Kauai, in Hawaii, like many years ago. Oh my God, Noel, I forgot that. Yes, yeah. You're right. Oh my God. And you yeah, were yeah, a yeah, keynote yeah. speaker. At the health uh, and wellness. At the uh, health yeah, and yeah, wellness. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. And you know, at that time, we had not even met uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard. Right, wow. So we were, but we, we, we did like this idea of Project mm -hmm. Heaven on Earth. How do we get more of that? So let me just tell you a little bit about uh, Martin. He's an international speaker, author, management consultant, and um, he's worked with heavy hitters, World Bank, Sony Entertainment, Virgin Records, ESSO, London Insurance. So he uh, really, you know, if you go to his website, uh, which I'm going to put in the chat, you can see um, his interviews with people like uh, Marianne Williamson and uh, Lynn Twist, the Pachamama Alliance. It's like a, his book here, Project Heaven on Earth, has a foreword by Jack Canfield. So Martin is, uh, I'm not going to read everything because I put a lot of that in the announcement and I'll put it uh, uh, with the recording, but <clears throat> he has been around the block and been sharing and doing the work of what uh, the Barbara Marks Hubbard has called us all to do. And um, we're just so grateful that we're reconnecting for the first time in 
over a decade. That so, long? Yeah. So welcome, Martin. I'm going to turn the floor over to you. I'm going to one moment. Is there anything I forgot to say? Uh, no, I think we're good. Looking forward to hearing what Martin has to share with us this evening and, and the opportunity for uh, questions and comments and interaction. Very good. So I'll go for about what, 40 minutes you said? Yeah, and, we'll and I, the way that we do this is that <clears throat> I'll, I will interrupt when I have an intelligent question so, or comment. So that might be very frequently or very infrequently. We never know. And um, uh, also, uh, we encourage dialogue. But we like to try to let Martin, he, he does have, this is the first time we've had this. He has a, a seven-page uh, uh, PowerPoint here. And um, we um, will be using that. We usually don't have something like that. So that's pretty cool until he's a professional. And uh, well, we like to make it as interactive as we can, but we, I'm going to give you the main stage right now. We will, Noel. Uh, I'm going to want... hold on just a second. I think Kathy Mason has something. Uh, don't you want to do a centering first? Oh, would you like to do that for us, Kathy? No, I was going to say you do it. <laughs> would everyone get everyone aligned? Okay. Good, good idea. Okay. I, I think we can. Um, uh, I'm going to offer it to one other person. Peter, he may be busy. He does always such a great job. But right now, I'm just going to ask us all to, to come into the center. If you feel, if you're not driving, if you feel comfortable, just close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And I think what will be really beneficial to our planet right now is to think of the pain that she is feeling with her atmosphere, her waters, her soils. And let's send our Mother Earth ship so much love and light. And let's send all of her inhabitants, especially those in Colorado, California, Lebanon, you know, all around this planet, those that right now are suffering because of the economy, suffering because of the virus, and let's send them so much love and light that it's an energy ball we're going to send to them, and it's going to disintegrate any fears, and we're going to visualize the most positive, powerful, and productive outcomes. This life is not happening to us. Life is happening through us. Life is for us. So if we just take a, a few moments of silence and breathe that in and send it out. <clears throat> breathe in the love send out the light. So when you feel ready, come back to the room and gently open your eyes and give thanks for we're grateful to be sharing this time together, to have this time together, and to remember what a wonderful planet this is that we get to call home and how much we love her and all the inhabitants here. And so thank you. Thank, thank you, you Noel. Reminder. Oh, she's one of my guardian angels. That's for sure. So welcome, Martin. Thank you, Noel. Thank you so much for being here. And thank I'd like to, I, I'm so desperate to hear about Project Heaven on Earth. So <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Over to can you. We, 
can we take it off share screen and I'll tell you when to share the next one? Yes, sir. All right. There we go. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm just delighted to be here. Yeah, with all of you. Conversation. Just wanted. I'm okay, sorry. if you're not uh, speaking, uh, please mute yourself. Well, a little bit more of the details here. Come on, you know. Okay, Peter, I'm sorry. I have to. Um, He's trying to give some instruction. Mute you. Maybe you could put it in the chat because you're breaking up, and I couldn't understand what you were saying. And now I'm frozen. So I can. You're fine. Can oh. you hear me? Yes. All right. Let's All right. Go. Hello, everybody. Let's begin again. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming here. Thank you, Noel and Bob, for putting this together, and Peter for putting this together. And uh, I just want to add my words for there's a fire in Penticton, uh, British Columbia, Canada, as well, that we want to get out quickly. Um, you know, you said something, Noel, which is really interesting to me. This is a time for head on earth. In the midst of all this craziness, what better time is there to look at the kind of life and world and reality that we want? Actually, let me say that a little, bit, a little added. Life, nation, world, and reality that we want. So a little bit more about me. Noel started a little bit, but I am a management consultant. I've worked with the companies that Noel talked about, um, Southern California Edison and Virgin Records and Sony Pictures, major companies, helping them with their vision, helping them look at the future. Um, I've spoken to the Harvard Business School four times on vision, um, and I helped set up a center for spirituality in the workplace at the Sylvie School of Business at St. Mary's University in Halifax, Canada. That was the first one that had ever been done. Uh, and I was been working a, a lot, as I said, in vision. And one of the issues that interested me was how do people get their vision? And more importantly, I, I kind, of, kind of made a skip. How does the world get its vision? So I was doing this talk on spirituality and work one, one evening at a, a conference in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I was thinking if the entire world is spiritual, the entire business world is spiritual, is that what you want, Martin? And I said, no, what I want is to transform business so we could transform the world. And this thought popped into my head, oh, you mean heaven on earth. And I can remember sitting there folks thinking, oh my God, you can't say heaven on earth. You can't say that, you can't say that. And then I thought, well, why can't you say that? I can certainly talk to you about the hells on earth, can I? We're talking about the environment, environmental issues and now COVID and the political situation in the US and in other countries, uh, refugee situation around the world. Uh, and so there's lots of hells on earth. Why don't we talk about heaven on earth? And I, so I began to get very interested in what is heaven on earth for people? I didn't have an idea what I meant by it myself. I, I really wanted to engage in a inquiry with people in terms of, well, what is heaven on earth for you? What's heaven on earth for you? So I began to ask tons and tons of people, what's heaven on earth? What's heaven on earth? What's heaven on earth? And I distill that down to three questions, which I'd like to ask each of you to look at this evening. So, uh, Noel, can we put the first one on? First question. Can you hear me? All right. Hold on just one moment. Go, go to share screen. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yep. Go to the second slide. Second slide. There you go. So, awesome. that's perfect. Uh, although you can go to full screen. Do you see down on the bottom there's Right there, no, to the right, 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 one more, no, too much, too much, back, 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 slowly back, back, right there. <laughs> That'll give you a full screen. No, did you click on that one? Yep, there you are. It's full screen now. It is, okay, I, I see the slides at the side, doesn't matter. All right, so here's my question, folks. Recall, recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. Recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth.
Can you, so some people are saying they can't hear me. Is that better now? So recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth and then just uh, press in the reaction button at the bottom. Just put a hand up so I can see if you'd like to answer and then un unmute yourself. Recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. Oh, who's, who's come on? Thomas. Yeah, Valentine and Maui. <laughs> Hi, Thomas. Yeah, Valent yeah well, it's Tom well, it's really Valentine. It's my first name, nine generations. But okay. I put the Thomas in because they named me that. I'm the last generation, the ninth. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, that's very interesting you said that because there's many times felt like heaven on earth. Um, when I was hidden out in the mountains, when I was with an African shaman and a yogi, uh, I felt heaven on earth when I was in that uh, golden light. You know, I was touched by the golden angels in, in the Christ consciousness. That's when I, I, I experienced heaven on earth. Yeah? Excellent. All right. In Northern I'm, California. I'm just going to take answers to the questions, and I'll come back at the end of the three questions, and we'll, we'll examine the questions more in depth. Thomas, can okay. you just mute yourself, but thank you. Who else? Sure. Aloha, Hi. brother. Aloha. Summer <laughs> Go ahead. Summer? Wonderful. Thanks. Hi, Summer. Um, hi. Thank you so much for being here. Um, very excited for this call and this experience. And I'd have to say, I've experienced heaven on earth so many times at rainbow gatherings. Because um, we live in harmony. We share. We feed each other. We do it all for free. It's on Mother Nature. And we don't have anything digital. And um, just witnessing people laughing and ha being happy in, in nature is my, my dream. <laughs> so um, that's when I've experienced it. Lovely. Thank you. Very clear. And I love the, the art behind you. All right. Mm -hmm. If you just mute yourself and who else? Let me take one or two more. At least one more. Well, I'll go. Noel. Uh, I would say heaven on earth is at our co-creators convergence gathering because you know, we create such a vortex of love there that um, that's, I guess that's why everybody keeps coming back. It was supposed to be a one-off and now we're on our eighth year, but it's just such a, a, a loving community. And I see Kathy shaking her head. She's part of that. So that, that's what it is for me. Lovely, Noel. Thank you. I think you have and two more people that wanted that raised their hand. I can. Uh, Christopher, did you raise your hand? David Powell, go ahead. Dave, and Dave, David, go ahead. And excuse me, uh, Martin. People are still having difficulty hearing you. All right. Let me. Is that better if I just put the microphone up to my mouth? Definitely. All right. Good. David. Uh, yes, so this was many years ago. Um, can you see me and hear me okay? Perfectly. Okay. Um, we were part of a, a group, um, meditation. a meditation group, and we were with our, our, our teacher, and he performed this holy ceremony. And holy is a festival they have in India, and uh, he, sprayed, he sprayed us with water, and it was like colored water. <laughs> colored water. And... It was um, it was just liberating, just um, I was I, I feel like I've more experienced more bliss in my life than most people ever have, and that was one of those blissful heavenly times. Thank you, David. Very clear. I I there I could see it. Uh, Noel, you said someone else. You want to mute yourself, David, please, and then somebody else. I think that was it. If there's anyone else. Okay. Yeah, so let's go then to question two, the next slide, Noel. Oh, Noel, you're, I can't hear you. Next slide. Noel, you're, you're muted. There you go. Go to the next slide. There you go. All right, so imagine you have a magic wand. And with this wand, you can have heaven on earth. You can create heaven on earth. What is heaven on earth for you? Imagine you have a magic wand and with it, you can create heaven on earth. What's heaven on earth for you?
Valentina, did you put your hand up? Okay, how about uh, Summer uh, Rose? Sum Summer Rose, go ahead. Unmute. I'd say again, all beings being fed and having homes and sharing the life uh, requiring essences of our planet, be they food, water, equally, egalitarianly, no more hierarchies, um, lots of circle dancing, uh, people smiling, happy, people not seeing different colored skin, just each other's glowing hearts. <laughs> that would be peace on earth for me. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, Summer, very much, very much. Sure. Who else? Just want to mute yourself, Summer, and we... <clears throat> Who else? Somebody else? Valentin? Yeah. yeah. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's really interesting. That brings up for me, I was at Woodstock, uh, the 25th anniversary, and I was involved with promoting a book called for Woodstock, but I was with Peter Gabriel and we lit a candle and a wave. It's like an ocean of wave of love that touches the world. So when you say a magic wand, I would say to touch the whole globe with you know, purity, the purity, to bring the purity back onto earth would be heavenly for me. And, you know, the beginning of time when we were, when we hug one another, when we touch each other, we smile at one another, we help one another, we bring humanity back in, a, in, in, in its beauty and its majestic form to bring heaven on earth. And that's what I experienced in Woodstock with Peter Gabriel. Everybody lit a candle to bring the love and the divine love, the spiritual love to each of our brothers and sisters around the planet, around the globe. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Valentine. Thank you very much. Yes. Let's take a couple more. Who, anybody not shared? All you have to do is unmute and start speaking. It's that simple. Aloha. Aloha, um, who's that? I'm Dana. Dana. Aloha. Okay. Um, for me, uh, all beings consciously connected to source energy and living from a consciousness of love and wholeness instead of fear and division. I'm just making notes here. I want to come back. Very clear. Very clear, Dana. Thank you. One more, please. Looks like Christopher Dennis. Unmute yourself and... What's, he what's heaven on earth for you, Christopher? Oh, he says, sorry, he can't speak. Okay. I just thought he had his hand up. Uh, David Powell. David, are you there? Just a minute. <laughs> yeah, Dave and I are using this, the same computer. This is Talia, his wife. I don't oh, know. Yeah, if you <laughs> yeah I, I got you now. Okay, I guess, you know, taking off from the last woman to speak, it's, uh, it is feeling that experience of love within, which I think is something like what we've experienced at CCC and we share together and what we experienced at our holy festival with our teacher. It's just kind of like, or what? I experience when I'm writing in my journal. It's kind of like calling on the presence of the love of the universe to come. And it's just an answer to that prayer. So if we could live together in that experience, that would be pretty close to heaven on earth. Let me, can I make one little correction? If, let's take the if away. Oh. <laughs> All right. And say okay. we are living in that. Ah. As opposed to that would be heaven on earth, which is conditional, rather than saying this is heaven on earth. And so that description is your declaration. That's what you want. Ah, I like that. Yes, thank you. Thank this you. is thank heaven you. on earth. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Martin, uh, Christopher yes. Dennis uh, says he can't speak, but he would like to type. So if he, I told him if he types something, here we go. Here's yes. from Christopher. Heaven on Earth for me is an understanding of unity consciousness through the experience of it. I believe to greater and lesser extents the glimpses of heaven and all these visions shared are versions of this. 
for me, part of this experience is experiencing a sense of unconditional love that creates an intense feelings of bliss. Wow. Very clear, Christopher. Very clear. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, folks. Amen, Christopher. Yes. Here's the third question. Noel, can we pop to the next uh, slide, please? <clears throat> yes. The, um, it's, um... <laughs> okay. I'm screen sharing. I'm hitting the right button, the right click, and here we go. Let me try it again. There we go. There you go. There you go. All right. So, third question What simple, easy, what simple, easy, concrete step will you take in the next 24 hours to make heaven on earth real? And I'll tell you how to get these questions off my website as well, so you don't have to worry about <clears throat> writing them down. But what, unless you want to, what simple, easy, concrete step will you take in the next 24 hours to make heaven on earth real? Who'd like to share that? I will happily share that I um, breathe in love and breathe out love and I do my best in those moments when I'm not doing anything to uh, just allow the love of the universe that I feel inside me reverberate out to, and I kind of like send it out just to help other people feel the love. That's, that's, what, that's what I do. Thank, Thank you, you Summer. A lot. <laughs> You're welcome. Summer, what, sorry, let me just go back a second to you. Uh, and then Marco, I'll come to you. Um, you said you do that a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Can you, I wanted to know if you're willing to add one little wrinkle to that, which is that given that you do it a lot, would you be willing to say, and, and this is my contribution to heaven on earth? Mm -hmm. I do it a lot. And this is my contribution to heaven on earth. Fabulous. You see the difference? It's the same action. <laughs> uh -huh. You got Thank it. You. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Marco. Yeah, uh, in the next 24 hours, my my contribution to heaven on earth will be taking part tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. California time to be in with the food healers and our goal to end hunger on earth. Whew. Uh, Marco, I want to come back to that a little later because you said something important and i want to come back to it. it's very important what you just said um beautiful th thank you one more what will you do in yeah. the next somebody's got their will you mute yeah valentine valentine thank yeah, you Mo, very interesting because it's my life's work my life's mission that i came in to do is to bring the diamonds of love to each soul wherever i go and when i was in denmark and sweden i was with a um a prayer uh, a buddhist said to me um prayer warrior and he, he's from england and came into denmark and said valentine i i really meditated on your mission and your journey and he said to me the greatest gift that you have is the diamonds of love that you share with every soul wherever you go and that's what i would do to help humanity is to bring the diamonds of love and that inner peace and that joy Wherever I walk, wherever I go, and we all unite together in our consciousness of helping humanity. Very lovely. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Valentine. All right. Let me go over the questions again. You can take, the, take it off share screen. So question one was, <clears throat> recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. And we heard things like uh, the golden light I experienced, um, holy water, all beings fed, uh, the time I was with Peter Gabriel. <clears throat> there were lots of examples of people having experienced heaven on earth. <clears throat> but two things. One, I did not define heaven on earth. That's one. And secondly, notice how nobody asked me, Martin, what do you mean by heaven on earth? Nobody ever asks me to define it, which I find fascinating. So how do you know what I'm talking about? But you must know what I'm talking about or you couldn't be answer the question. And it's because I believe that people have within them something that I call the already knowing about what heaven on earth is. 
And so when I asked you the first question, recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. Oh, well, the time I was with Peter Gabriel, the time I did this, the time of the golden light, the time of the, gold, of the holy water. You go right to it because you already know. And your soul searches your past and goes, that incident. That's one. The second question was I said, here's a magic wand. So I'm going to point it that way. Here's a magic wand and with it you can have heaven on earth. Now, why did I put it that way? Because what the magic wand does is remove the necessity for you having to know how you're going to do something. And if you don't have to know how, you can go deeply into the what. In this case, the what being heaven on earth. The reason you don't have to know is because all you say is this is what I want and it's the magic wand's job to simply create it. So the how is removed. And with the removal of the how, you're much more powerfully diving into what heaven on earth is for you. And we heard some wonderful, wonderful, just wonderful uh, answers. Be conscious, connected to love and wholeness, experience the love within CCC, the holy festival, um, breathe in love, breathe out love, a food healer, um, bring the diamonds of love to each soul. So you know what heaven on earth is which is astounding to me, but not really. We all know what heaven on earth is. We all have this knowing in our soul, our soul's essence, our soul's divinity, to say, this is heaven on earth for me. Now, we heard different answers, fine. But did you also notice that every time you heard somebody else share what heaven on earth is for them, you went deeper into what it is for you because they gave you permission they expanded the space within which heaven on earth shows up. Then we move to the third question. What simple, easy, concrete step will you take in the next 24 hours to bring heaven on earth to make it real in the world? Now, the reason we go to the third question is because if we just left it at the second question, it's too big. You, your mind might go, oh, that's too big. I can't do it. Forget it. Instead, what I'm saying is, Let's go to the third question. Let's go to the simple, easy. There's a very important words. Simple, easy, concrete step that you will take in the next 24 hours to make begin making heaven on earth real. So it turns from an idea into an actual lived experience. And the third question also, you could be doing something new that you've never done before. That's my direct contribution to heaven on earth. Or as Sumner said, uh, well, no, Valentin, bring diamonds of love to each soul. So if he chose, he could do what he's doing anyway and add to that, and this is my contribution to heaven on earth. Sumner said, breathe in, breathe out love. She's doing it anyway, but she's now adding the consciousness of, and this is my contribution to heaven on earth. So let me just stop there for a moment and then we'll take it further. But comments, questions. Yes. I kind of Sorry. found it interesting. I was thinking, um, well, if heaven and earth is right here, right now, even in all the chaos, <laughs> is heaven on earth. And um, I don't necessarily think that heaven on earth is going to be free of suffering or free of things that come up that we'll still have to take care of stuff. Um, but it's just that maybe our way that we respond to things rather than reacting and freaking out. We just respond to whatever comes up with love um, is more of what I was feeling, you know, uh, in reflection of everybody's thoughts was just all this beautiful stuff is da 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 da, da. But if heaven and earth is right here, right now, then, it, then it's all inclusive it was what came up for me. Very profound, Summer. Um, it, for me, it has two aspects. It's both being and becoming. Mm -hmm. So this is heaven on earth right now. If, if we believe it, it's not, guess what? It's not. If we let that belief go and just, I mean, you can everybody just stop for a second and just let, you just let it in right now. Can you feel it? It's here. <laughs> so that's the being. Mm -hmm. The becoming is the doing. So for you, Sumner would be breathe in love, breathing out love. You're doing that this moment, the next moment, the next moment. So the continuing moments of now, you are creating more future moments of heaven on earth. 
clear? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Who else? Uh, you're Mark? asking me a question, you said. Thomas? Yeah, I believe you were asking a question, you said. You put my name up? Uh, sorry, yeah, no, I asked for any, any feedback on those three questions and uh, th that whole exercise. Yeah, I, th I thought you had taken it off uh, mute, so I thought you wanted to answer that question. Did you want to? Yeah, yeah, I'd be yeah. happy to. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, well, repeat that a sec. <laughs> okay, sure. repeat what you, yeah. So I said, we just went through these three questions. We heard people answering, and then I gave a little reflection on each of the three questions. And what's your reaction? Where did that leave you? Any insights? Anything you'd like to share about that entire process? Yeah, it's about, you know, doing your work and, and finding an inner, inner, well, finding the balance and finding the inner peace. To be, you have to do your work in order to get there. You know, I had to get into sweat lodges and do all my relations with the Lakota, for example. People think that, you know, you have to do your work. You know, you have to move through things in order to bring heaven inside you too. Heaven's inside us. To be able to radiate it out and have that radiance, you have to you have to work through all your relations. You know, forgiveness, what we call in Hawaiian, aponopono, or around the world, you know, it's forgiveness. You know, whatever that is, to come bring more love into the heart so we can radiate it out and bring heaven to earth and all hearts connecting all over the planet, you know, wherever we go. And every moment, in every moment where we can touch lives, we can touch people, we can touch animals, we can touch, the, well, everything around us, the trees, you know, everything is connected to us. Stay connected to, to everything that brings that joy and love and an inner peace to you and radiate it out with radiance and joy. Thanks, Thomas. Very clear. Your path is very clear, my brother. Very clear. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Martin? Yes. Uh, Dana has put a comment in. I don't know if Dana wants to speak that or whether she would like you to read that. It's Dana there. Dana, what would you prefer? I can read it if you want. I, I just said in different Please. terms, I believe heaven on earth comes with the anchoring of higher fourth dimensional consciousness and the edges of fifth dimensional consciousness here on the planet, which is the shift that our planet is currently going through and which probably most of us here are, are here on a mission to assist with. So, um, so anchoring those different, those new dimensional levels of consciousness that we're now in process is bringing heaven on, on earth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Notice that of the three comments so far, notice how each person talked about their way of bringing heaven on earth. So I, I just want you to notice that. I'm going to talk about that in a moment too. But each very beautiful and each somewhat different. Someone else. Thanks, Dana. Someone else? A share? What was that process like for you, the three questions? If I go to... Oh, I can go to gallery view here and see. Ah, that's better. Would someone else like to share? Okay. No. Yes? No? Okay. <clears throat> so. Oh, no. Yes, go ahead. A, I'll just say, I think it's about heart connection. You know, it, all of it is, whatever heaven on earth is, it, it, it needs to come through the heart. And okay. um, to be, build a field of, resonance and coherence. And it uh, looks like uh, David and Talia would like to speak. They're, Thanks, yeah. Noel. Just David me, I think. Talia. <laughs> Thanks. Well, it just struck me when you said you don't know, have to know how to do it. I believe that those were your words. <laughs> and um, I really like it. It frees up the whole area the whole space because it's it's within so much um for me the experience of heaven on earth is within and then w when it's when i can just even just a, a simple asking or calling it in that love fills fills that space inside and then you know you can i can ask to 
to touch someone else or what what's the next step and it comes <laughs> so um i like just the giving and receiving so simply like that thank you talia thank you thank you uh martin yes we have a comment coming through facebook yeah martin this is bob and uh just can you like, hear bob can you hear me i can yep yeah yep. um i um uh, Julie, our friend Julie Uli said in the Facebook post, because she's watching on Facebook Live, for her, heaven is a level of consciousness. Is that all she said? Yeah. Okay. Heaven is it. Thank you. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. All right. <clears throat> so. And, and I, I do have one little comment. I, yeah. All you brought up about the wand and not having to do it. And I always say, when I have these plans and stuff like that, I always say, the universe, God's source, but it has a much better imagination than Noel Marshall. So I think they're probably, I don't have to figure it out. What I have to do is have trust and faith and, and walk my best, my best life. Thank you, Noel. I'm complete. So in, I want to do a little plug for my book here, but in a very particular way. Would someone like to read the title of the book? Thomas, I'll be Thomas, happy to. What is the title? Because it's right in alignment to Project Heaven on Earth. Okay, now I want you to read the title in another way. There's a completely different meaning in the same words. Can you see? Okay. It? You, well, it says autograph copy. <laughs> <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> I know. But it gives a comic relief. It, uh, it's funny that it's there. So anyway. Oh, thought I'm laughing. No. <laughs> okay. I'll say it says. Okay. Project heaven, heaven on, on earth. earth. Right. Uh, the, the first right. word is a verb and project. a noun. Okay. So the we're project? talking and project. Oh, yeah. Okay. Project heaven on earth. As in a state of being. Yes. So Love it. I, uh. was going, I was going to call the work the heaven on earth project. And my dear friend Richard Porter said, no, 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 no. Project heaven on earth. Marty, because project has two meanings. And I went, oh my God. <laughs> so that's the point. We're okay. talking about the being, mm -hmm. which some of you talked about, and we're talking about the doing, which so some of you talked about. So which is the correct answer? All of them. There is no <laughs> the right answer here. I remember I did a, a, a seminar like this live in the days when I did live stuff. Uh, and a, a man st stood up and said, it's about ending hunger. Heaven on earth is about ending hunger. How can you have heaven on earth? You have hunger in the world. It's impossible. You've got to end hunger. Okay. Then he sits down. A woman stands up and says, it's about love. Love is the essence of heaven on earth. And then they start getting into it with each other. No, no, no. It's about ending hunger. No, no, no. It's about love. And, love. and I just let them go on a little bit. And I went, so watch what happened. Now we have a debate about which is the best way to do it. And what we're doing is we're spending our time trying to be right and make the other guy wrong. Totally useless, useless expenditure of energy. What all of us have to do is support that guy in ending hunger, because that's what resonates with him. And we have to support the woman in bringing love to the world because that's what resonates with her. And then it becomes an entirely different game. Mm -hmm. So that, this is the real story here. Hmm. Five or 10 years ago, you heard a lot of language. The current story is not working. The current story is not working. We need a new story. We need a new story. Remember that language? And then mm -hmm. you stopped hearing that language. And the reason you stopped hearing it is because nobody named the new story. So if I said, for example, Valentin, our relationship is terrible. It's terrible. You know what? The story of our relationship, it's like nothing works. Nothing works. We need a new story. Nothing works. Nothing works. After a while, you'd go, okay, I get the point. Now what? But if I said, Valentine, our relationship doesn't work and we need a heaven on earth relationship, that's my commitment to you. Now, all of a sudden, we have a new story. What we are doing is naming the new story. And if you decide to join, the membership is being a human being, you all qualify. If you decide to join by declaring, okay, I'm in, 
I'm, I'm a contributor. I'm an angel of heaven on earth or ambassador of heaven on earth. Then you begin to look for those opportunities in which you can contribute to the co-creation of heaven on earth so that it becomes our new story. And I need to acknowledge Barbara Marks Hubbard here, because I know this came out of Barbara, and I want to read what she wrote. This is on the back of the book here. She said, when I first heard Martin speak about heaven on earth years ago, and it was years ago, it honestly seemed too mystical to me. But now I love it. I love it because this whole field you are establishing for, I love it. I love this whole field you are establishing for us all. Thanks, Martin, for being such a key part of the new story. I was knocked out when she wrote me that. Knocked out. She was very clear in the early days. I mean, she was polite, but I got that she wasn't interested. And then years later, all of a sudden she got it and she wrote that. So thank you, Barbara, and thank you for setting this up. I think what she, got, well, I don't think what she got, what she did get was this is the new story if you decide to join. And all you have to do is say, okay, I'm in. So let me stop for a moment here, take some more comments, and then I want to talk about some of the examples because this is a lot more than just a good idea. There are people all over the world who are engaged with this dramatically. Noelle, you had your hand up? Uh, yes, I just want to read in a comment from Christopher Dennis. He says, what about dealing with conflict? Perfect. So what about dealing with conflict? See, that's a hell on earth for you, Christopher. What would heaven on earth be for you? So I'm, I'm just assuming. Let us say it's the end of conflict. But there is no conflict. That's your contribution, if you choose, to heaven on earth. You can't use conflict as a reason to not create heaven on earth. You can use, if you want, conflict as the reason that there's hell on earth. Well, okay, we know that. Now what are you going to do to get rid of conflict? You might want to look at Marshall Rosenberg's work. Uh, if you have it, Christopher. Okay. Uh, yes, and then Sumner, Summer says, I keep wanting to call you Sumner. I don't know why. Summer, excuse me. <laughs> Summer Rose says, this is an important topic for me, wondering about personal expression versus unified expression. Very interesting you should bring that up, Summer. This is about 25 years old, 30 years old. At first, it was, this is impossible, people didn't get it, they dismissed it, it was naive, it was stupid. And then over the years, as I and many others kept just seeding, seeding, seeding this, you could begin to get the sense that, oh, well, this is maybe a possibility, a potential here. Now, with all the COVID going on, and with the political turmoil, especially in the US, I, what I'm finding is people are much, much more willing to not only think about it, but to engage in it because the contrary of what's going on to a great extent in current reality is so hell on earth that, all right, let's go for it. Let's go for heaven on earth. So the, what we have just, I would say the last three or four weeks, Summer, so it's interesting that you bring it up to me. We've just begun to move into we. It's been mostly I. I don't mean I, Martin Root. I mean individuals around the world who get this and are working on it. It literally, this is the third webinar, I think, or second webinar I've done. Well, no, third meeting in the last maybe as many weeks. And at each one, somebody starts talking about we. I have three women, for example, I was on the uh, Zoom call with them this week from uh, Portugal. And their commitment is heaven on earth for Portuguese language countries, you know, like Portugal, Brazil, Mozambique, Angola, uh, Capo Verde, those kinds of things. So that's theirs. Um, does that answer my, your question, Summer? No? Put it, take it off mute so I can hear you. Yeah, so I guess what I'm saying, because you had mentioned before, somebody said, um, we need to do this, or we need to do it this way. This is how we can create heaven on earth. And you're saying, no, you need to do it your way, and you need to do it your way, and everybody's doing it their way. But my understanding is that when we have a unified vision together, collectively, like there's a critical mass of us that have this unified vision, that's what will catalyze heaven on earth for everyone, not just those of us who are kind of like live more in that space currently. 
Good. So let me make two distinctions for you. Thank you. That's a good clarifying question. What I was referring to earlier was when people say this is the way to do heaven and earth, whatever the way is, whether it's internal, it doesn't matter what the way is, because then that, that dismisses those who don't want to play that way. That's what I was referring to. Now, what you've just said, I agree with you. We has to come into play right now. Um, I read something recently that we is the next level of spiritual uh, mastery, of spiritual growth. We've done I. I has gone a little too far off track. We need to go back. We need to now make we the spiritual uh, what engagement that we're after. So I'm right with you. That is me to we, yes. Yeah. Or me and we. I don't want to leave me out. Uh, I want to include me. Ego to we go. <laughs> All right. So any, uh, let me, now I want to go into the book because you, uh, you spoke about what I call the gateways. Let me just look right here for a second to find those. Oops. So what happens when you ask the question, what's heaven on earth, what's heaven, the three heaven on earth questions over and over again, what you begin to hear is what I call the gateways into heaven on earth. And there are seven of them. So one is, and you've heard some people here say, your inner world. Those are people who say the way you create heaven on earth is by creating it inside. Noel, you said that. More heaven on earth in here, the more it will show up in the world. That is a gateway. Others, relationship. Relationship with yourself, with another, with the divine. Conflict, you know, when, when uh, who else was saying about conflict? Conflict is about relationship. The, that is, the, there are relationships that are not in heaven on earth. So yours might be, who I've forgotten who said that, uh, that you ended conflict and create heaven on earth relationships. That'd be a, a beautiful charge for you. Others are, uh, another gateway, living your global value. My wife's value, global value is joy. She walks into a room, you're going to feel joy. I have a very dear friend, Tim Klaus. <clears throat> His is um, harmony. He walked, oh, so excuse me, order, order, mine's harmony. He walks into a room or into a home, he sees whatever out of harmony, and he has this incredible ability to bring harmony into the physical world. So love, harmony, ethics, you know, those people, uh, those people are about creating that global value, that particular global value. Another gateway is ending a suffering. Hunger, war, poverty, illiteracy, slavery, uh, you know, uh, beating up women, violence against women. There usually will be, if, if ending a suffering is your gateway, there usually will be one what I call keystone suffering. One suffering that really makes you crazy with pain. I remember doing a talk with a friend of mine, Brendan McKenzie, a real estate agent in Halifax, Canada. We we're having coffee. And I said, is there a suffering in the world that bothers you, real estate agent? She said, homelessness. It was like I punched her in the stomach. Her face went white just to say that word. So I knew that was her keystone suffering. And we'll come back later and talk about wh uh, what she did. Um, and then institutions. What if law? What if government, business, law, science, healthcare? What if the institutions of the world said religion? Our job is to help co-create heaven on earth. What would they do, those institutions? And then the final one, oh, excuse me, two more. Heaven on earth for my nation. So we have people, especially there's an incredible woman in uh, Elizabeth Zugler in Austria, who's taken on Austria as a heaven on earth nation. We have people doing that in Denmark. Um, we have a, a, a man, I did an interview with this guy in Dehradun, India. I had to look it up, I had no idea where it is, Northwest India. And he runs a newspaper, online newspaper, Suraj Kumar. He interviewed me. And in the conversation, I said, Suraj, what about Dehradun being a heaven on earth city? And he went, oh my God. So the purpose of the newspaper now, he wrote a full page editorial, Dehradun, a heaven on earth city, 
He's going to run something every week. And the masthead next month will be their sixth anniversary of the paper. He's going to put on the masthead from then on, Derudun, I have it on our city. We have a man from Gabon, Africa, who now lives in Montreal, Canada. When I did a similar lecture with him is this. He said, oh my God. And he's come up with a Facebook group called, get this, Africa, a heaven on earth continent. So it's starting to show up all over the world. And then finally, and Summer, you said this, heaven on earth, this here now. So what the book then does is go into each of those separate seven or eight gateways in depth and how, if, if it resonates with you, you can use that gateway to make your contribution to heaven on earth. All right, let me stop there again. Some comments and I wanna give you some more specific examples, blow away examples of what people are doing. Thank you. Well, Martin, this is Noel and I just wanna say, um, you're already blowing me away. I mean, Africa, a heaven on earth continent. 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 <laughs> yeah, that is really awesome. And he is from. He is from the country of Gabon, French. Well, he's bilingual, but French native, native tongue, uh, French. Now lives in Montreal, and he just lit up. He said, "That's it. That's what I've been wanting to do." Not for his country. He said, "That'll come later," but for my continent. Mm -hmm. Or the, the women this week, you know, Portuguese speaking nations. People come up with the most outrageous creative ideas that resonate with them that I could never think of. I have a police officer in Texas who wrote a 16 page manual, Heaven on Earth for Law Enforcement. Yes, it's on my website. Can you believe that? That's fantastic. That's some of the news you don't hear about. So that's why it's so great. We, we have a, a, a gathering, a watering hole, like the conversation.cc, where we and the co-creators convergence, where we can dive in and learn about these things. So this is really awesome. And that's what I was going to ask you was about what's happening globally. And, and you're already answering some of that. So, Let me give you just a couple more. Sure. There was a woman in, in Hawaii, now lives in Colorado, and she grew, Susan Lima Fryer, she grows little microgreens. You know, it takes like 10 days or something, and then you grind them up and drink them, and they're very healthy. Well, what can I do? I, can, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I said, well, you make microgreens, yeah? Hmm. So why do you make microgreens? In essence, it's because she wanted to return us to the Garden of Eden. And I said, why don't you put your definition of heaven on earth at the, no, she came up. Why, I'm going to put my definition, she said, of heaven on earth at the bottom of all of my emails. One simple action, it goes out everywhere. Then a woman in Chile saw that and added the second heaven on earth question. Here's a magic wand. So now Susan has flipped it. And her first thing at the bottom says, imagine you have a magic wand and with it, you can create heaven on earth. What's heaven on earth for you? And then she goes into her definition of heaven on earth. That goes out in every email that she does. Now, let me go back to the real estate agent because this is this will blow your mind. So I said, all right, so, uh, uh, Brenda, have it, what's heaven on earth? You know, so the suffering is homelessness. What's heaven on earth for homelessness? And she says, well, that's obvious, a home for everyone. But you don't understand. I'm, I'm a real estate agent. I, I, I work 87 hours a day. I work 10 days a week. I'm in a relationship. You don't understand how busy I am. I said, fine, fine, fine. What are you going to do? So the light bulb goes on in her head. You, Oh, she goes back to her agency, sits everybody down, 10 agents, and says, okay, we're going to create a home for everyone. How? Simply, very important word. I'm asking you to all to agree that once you've sold a home or an office building, commercial property, that you agree to have $100 taken off your, your, your uh, commission check. We'll do that. All you have to do is say yes, and we'll do that automatically. They all said yes. There's, a, a, I think, a cap of $1,200 a year, I think. They've raised, last time I spoke to her, over $400,000. It's called A Home for Everyone. And the judges, so you uh, individuals and organizations apply every year for money from that, those funds. The judges are, <laughs> I love this, each of the 10 agents plus one of their clients. Those 20 people decide. Let me give you another one. So I'm on a web call like this. 
We're talking about the sufferings in the world. And this woman, Sue Bookchin, says, I'll tell you a suffering. Man, was she mad. I'll tell you a suffering. Violence against women. What would you do, Martin? I said, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know your financial situation. You could donate $5,000. You could donate a penny. Well, what difference would a penny make? One of the other women on the call, Diani, said, wait a minute. What if everybody in your county donated a penny a day to help end violence against women? And she went, oh my God. They started, a, she, she belonged to a women's group called Second Story. They started a program called Making Change where they handed out a little mason jar. Let's pretend this is a, an empty mason jar with a picture of a woman, half of her face beaten up, bruised, half of her face bright alive with the light shining out. They asked people to contribute a penny a day or more for a year. You could not give a check for $3.65 and say that's the year. No, a penny, a penny, a penny, a penny, because they wanted that consciousness to go into people's head. The, people ne the, the county next door, Queens County, said, we want in. They raised $2,500 from pennies. They took that, this was in Lunenburg County, Canada, Nova Scotia, to the government of Canada, to a group there called Status of Women, who gave them $100,000 for each of the subsequent three years. She now reports that wherever she goes in the county, the first question is, what can I do to help? You have no idea what a simple action can do. Now, I want to take that. I talked about putting it on the email. I talked about the cop in police officer rather in, in Texas. I talked about the real estate agent. I talked about the penny a day. I talked about um, the Portuguese language speaking nations. But before the Portuguese language nations and before uh, Africa have known Earth continent, this woman, Elizabeth Ziegler in Austria comes on and she says, I know what my heaven on earth project is. And I said, what? Austria is a heaven on earth nation. I went, what? <laughs> Why would you? I'm like, whoa. And I said, Elizabeth, let me ask you a question. Why do you say that? And she said in her Germanic accent, well, Martin, it's because it's simple. And she taught me a profound lesson. I don't know what your simple is, but you do. When you find that simple, when you find what is simple for you to do, then you'll do it. I don't want you to get stopped with heaven and earth is too big. It's too overwhelming. I can't make any difference. I'm black. I'm white. I'm a man. I'm a woman. Whatever BS reason you come up with, I want you to engage in the next 24 hours with a simple, easy, concrete action because then you're in the game of creating the new story. That's how this all fits together. Ooh, my heart. My heart, this is awesome, Martin. This is those stories. And you know, I'm sure they're just like a tip of the iceberg. I mean, you've, you've been planting seeds for how many years now? I 35. Mean, wow. Well, no, let me tell you the one that, that's even, I, I got one other. <laughs> so I'm here tonight on Prince Edward Island, Prince Edward Island, Canada. If every, any of you, especially girls, when you were young, read Anne of Green Gables, mm -hmm. it's from here. So I'm doing this seminar here uh, up in the North Shore at a little retreat center, beautiful retreat center called Rock Barra. And this thought pops into my mind. Prince Edward Island is Canada's first heaven on earth province. We don't have states here, we have provinces. Prince Edward Island is Canada's first heaven on earth province. Eh, no, 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 no. I don't know. Dismiss the thought. And I'm talking away, talking about Thought comes back. Prince Edward Island. It's Canada first. And then it comes back again. I thought, okay, okay, okay. So I just said it out loud. I said, PEI is Canada's first heaven on earth province. Since that time, we have a, uh, it's so moving to me. We have a tea merchant who's created a blend called heaven on earth tea. We have a cafe that's created a heaven on earth coffee. We have a jewelry store that hands out a little card with the three questions for every purchase. We have Anderson House, which is a, a, a home for uh, battered women, did a fundraiser called Heaven on Earth for Anderson House. 
the Kiwanis Club, which is a service club like Rotary and Lions, has an award called the Heaven on Earth Leadership Award that is open to any public or high school student in the entire province. They have to come up with their own project. They have to do that project and then they can apply to win because Kiwanis is into service. They want to engender service. Now, one final thing. Uh, for Two summers ago, we were here and this wonderful woman, Kelly Redmond, I hope she's watching, who helped me with this. I said, Kelly, you know, we, there's four political parties here. There's the ND starting from the left. There's the New Democratic Party, NDP. Then there's the Greens, the Liberals, and the Conservatives. Liberals are like Democrats, Conservatives like Republicans. I said, wait a minute, I know the leaders of three of the four. And she said, well, I know the fourth. So I set up a meeting, which we videoed, with each of those three, four leaders, the leaders of each of the political parties, including the premier equivalent to the governor, I asked them the three heaven on earth questions that I asked you, and I asked them using the same magic wand, what is heaven on earth for Prince Edward Island? And we put that together in a video of all four of them speaking. As far as I know, it's the first time that's ever been done in the world. I'm telling you all of this folks, because this is much more than a good idea. The momentum has clearly begun. And if you're still skeptical, I'm going to invite you to go to Google, not now, and in, in quotes, this is very important, the instruction, in quotes, put heaven on earth, end quote, 2018. Mark down the number of results you get. Then in quotes, put heaven on earth, end quotes, then 2019, mark down the results you get. And then in quotes, put heaven on earth, quotes, end quotes, 2020, and mark down the results. Watch how it is exploding globally. Something is going on in culture globally underneath. It's like, you know, I'm at the sea here and when there's a storm, the sea is all blah, 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 blah. and you dive in, it's calm. Underneath the surface hoo-ha that's going on in the world, something is arising clearly. Uh, Dana, you, you said fifth dimension. I think so too. I think so too, no question for me. Uh, okay, how am I doing for time, Ms. Noel? Because I got a couple other things I want to talk about. Well, I think we maybe should uh, pause here, see if there's some questions, comments. Um, Lovely, let's do that. We don't, you know, uh, I know I'm going to have very uh, sweet dreams tonight, just thinking about all my, my brain taking this all in. Uh, it's really, really amazing. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Noel. It's just so wonderful to feel this. I mean, I, seriously, my heart just feels, you know, it just feels so wonderful. Uh, but I want to open it up to the floor. You can unmute yourself. I'm just asking you, after you're finished talking, please mute yourself again, because if you don't, then your picture pops in and out uh, when other people are speaking. So that's why I ask you to mute yourself. Unmute yourself. You can talk. Mute yourself again. So in any of these Incredible story. Somebody must have, it must have touched some besides me. Right on. <laughs> Who else? Oh, no, no, Marco. I want to go back to Marco for a second. You listening? Unmute yeah. yourself. Yep. You said, uh, da, 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 da. what is it about ending hunger, right? Yes. Sure. Yes. So let me speak to that. One of the chapters in the book is ending a suffering. I spoke about a keystone suffering. Now, you said the same thing. There's a distinction that I want to make here between lessening the suffering and ending it. Those are not the same thing. First of all, lessening a suffering, all those people who are working on lessening suffering, wonderful, God bless you, very important. And I'm talking about another domain, which is ending the suffering. So the suffering no longer exists. Where's the world without hunger? Where is the world without racism? Where is the world without nuclear weapons? If you go on my site, Project Heaven on Earth, there are books there, there are resources there. So ending a suffering, watch it. It's coming up more and more as a Heaven on Earth uh, uh, what contribution in the world. So Marco, when you said that, I went, oh, he's on it. So thanks for doing that, man. Well, that's, that's you know part of our mission here. Uh, 
you know, our, our tagline on the conversation is the conversation about saving, healing, and transforming life on earth. Very clear. And, and Very ending, clear. Hung, ending hunger will transform so many more people into a world more, a more heaven-like world where, where if you're not worried about filling your belly every day, you have time to contribute in other ways to the people around you. Now, listen to his language, folks. Do you see how ending hunger for him is a keystone suffering? He's exactly what I was saying. When hunger is ended, the other sufferings will collapse. He knows that. Other people know that for other sufferings. That's exactly what you spoke to, Marco. Thank you. And for me, it started, Marco, and uh, I've forgotten when, but years ago, uh, uh, a PhD a developmental economist named Jeffrey Sachs wrote a book called Ending Poverty. This is like 20 years ago, roughly. And I remember seeing the book. I didn't even read the book, just the cover alone, that somebody would have the guts to stand up and say, ending poverty was like, oh my God, of course, that's what we're talking about. Thanks, Marco. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's give credit. You know, Jamin and Peter uh, have been working on this longer than I have, but, uh, you know, I've Ooh. come on board, like, I think it was July 5th, and, and the more I hear, you know, the more convincing it is that, you know, how hunger is, is going to be a keystone to transforming the planet. Very good. Very clear. Very clear. Let me go, because I'm watching a little bit of the chat, too, um, just yeah. to be clear on the Google. So it's, quote, double quote, heaven on earth, double quote, and the year. So qu double quote, heaven on earth, double quote, 2018. Double quote, heaven on earth, double quote, 2019. Double quote, heaven on earth, double quote, 2020. And watch the progression. Good. Thank you so much, Marco. Uh, all right, other comments? Yeah, I wanted to say something there, if I'm on. Yes, Valentin, go ahead. Yeah, it's very interesting because when Marco spoke of that, um, I was involved with um, one, it was called Project for Hunger around the world. We were going to do it here in the Hawaiian Islands on Maui with the director. He was Marlon Brando's cousin. His name was William Osco. And we wanted to develop a show to help people with hunger around the world, a television show. And um, to help bridge that in the world. And, and it really speaks to, and Maria Schreiber was involved and Oprah was involved. And they all talk about, well, we don't know if we're going to, they talk about it, but we wanted to do something to make a difference. They said, well, we may not be able to cure hunger, Oprah says. Well, I said, well, why don't you say that there is a way of moving through the homelessness in the world? And why don't you put your energies into saying in a positive way that we can end hunger and we can't. And um we, like I said, it was called one pay, one paycheck away, and they brought all these people on a world stage to talk about it. But I wanted to do it, Bill and I, regards to taking steps to end hunger, like Marco was saying, in all parts of the world. Yep. Yeah. 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 All of the world. It's our family. Yes. The world is our family. Yes. Other, thank you, Valentin. Yeah. Other comments from anyone. Yeah, Marco, go ahead. Yeah, if I can just add one more thing. Uh, here at, at the same link that brought everyone here, if you use that tomorrow starting at uh, 7 a.m. Friday Pacific time to 7 a.m. Saturday, we have a 24-hour block party going on, here, going on here. Come as you will, when you will. The first uh, 10, 12 hours are, have scheduled events where I said like 7 to 9 will be at Food Healers working on, on the the food healing project. And then again, at seven to 9 PM, we do the, the same thing. So anyone's welcome to join. Thank you. Thank you. Noel, how am I doing for time? I want to do, do a couple other things here. Um, it's a 15 year time, but um, I hear a lot of people are on the West coast. I think if everybody's good, let's just keep rolling. I'm loving this. Is, is that okay, guys? And yeah, I, we'll give you whatever time something. you need tonight. Okay, thank, thank you, Marco. You, Marco. Okay. okay, And thank you, Marco, also for informing people about the purpose of the conversation.cc and also what you're about and other opportunities here. 
and it's a drop-in site and I love it and I feel so welcome here and I love co-creating with you guys. So thank you. Thanks for doing it, Marco. Thank you. Good man. Yeah. Okay, um, Dana, I think wants to speak with you. That'll Dana, Dana, yes, Dana. Yeah, I, I uh, looked at your website last night and it was really great to see some of the stories of how this is unfolding and watch some of the videos of the people sharing what their vision is, like sharing the answers to all, all the questions and some of the evolution, evolutionary leaders doing that and, and so on. And, um, and I like that there are these different um, portals or different doorways. Gateways. To, gateways, yeah, going into the heaven on earth. And I do feel though, like that share the view that many expressed here that, that the inner, that the inner world um, is a fundamental piece uh, because like if we're working on these outer levels as well, which are important, we must at least concurrently be working on the inner inner world because our inner reality will reflect our outer experience. And as long as people are still coming from a place of a lack of wholeness inside, like a pain or fear, that I'm not sure that the outer changes will really hold because we have to we have to shift our inner consciousness and and heal the parts of us that are not whole or that are still in older older modalities, fear-based modalities, conditioning, etc. And then the outer change can like much more fluidly and, and naturally stem from that. Um, that's can, I can I respond? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, there's two things. First of all, your heart and your commitment and your love for the world is so clear, Dana. So, I mean, crystal clear. I mean, you have a very sweet heart. The only coaching, if I may, would be, there's a little for me of, it has to be done that way. It has to be inner. And it doesn't. Here's why. If someone comes to you and says, the way you create heaven on earth is to end hunger. And you say, no, you've got to like look inside first. You've just taken them off track. If for them, the way to end, excuse me, the way to create heaven on earth is to end hunger, support them in doing that because that's how the inner will change for them. But you can't say another gateway is the gateway it, because then it's, it's proselytizing. One of the fears that people have about heaven on earth is they think there's a hidden religious uh, dimension behind, you know, I'm really a proselytizing Christian in disguise. I'm Jewish, so it's not true. Um, so you have to let people discover what heaven is for them. Not heaven, excuse me, heaven on earth. And then say, I'm going to support you in doing that. That is the most powerful thing you can do. Mm -hmm. That unleashes. We, we, instead of imposing, we want to evoke. True, yeah. I wasn't meaning to impose with that, just to, like, just that it could be going on concurrently and... Even that, I would say no, Dana. No, not even that. Not even that, because you're still trying to get get that way into me. So my way, let, let, for example, let's say my way is ending hunger. And if I come to you and say, Dana, you've got to end hunger. Don't you understand? If people are starving, there can't be heaven on earth. I know it's about inner work for you, but you've got to do hunger. Do you see what the resonance that that sets up? then I'm trying to impose my way as the way. Won't work, can't work, because you'll be fighting with me. The energy goes into the fight. I need to support you in going the inner way as strongly as I can, and you need to support me, if it's true for me, to end hunger in the world. That, for me, is the way we're gonna, we are going to move up to the next level. All right, so I mean, different people doing different things and all contributing or different Correct. people focusing in, in different um, doorways and... There's, there's, it, it will resonate for them in a certain way. You know, the police officer, a 16 page manual, heaven on earth for law. Where the hell does that come from? That's so cool. I don't know. Crazy. He thought it up. <laughs> so I wanted to unleash the creativity. Think of it, I know, think of it like a piece of metaphorical software. 
So whenever you get a new piece of software, you, you uh, boot it up and all of a sudden, all these new opportunities and possibilities are in front of you. But then it stops and says, Dana, but I can't go any further until you put Dana content in. That's what this is like metaphorically. It's saying you can now have heaven on earth. What is it for you? And I'll support you in that. Great. Awesome. I do this with uh, voting. Like when people say, oh, I'm going to vote this way or that way. It's like, ah, I just trust that you know who to vote for. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. Yeah. And that is a big deal right now, especially. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just going to go away for one second here, folks. I'm still watching, but somebody asked, what is the, um, the four leaders, the four heaven on earth leaders? If you go to project, uh, yeah, go to the YouTube channel. Oh, hold on, hold on. If you go here, I'll come back and you can, that's my YouTube channel. And you can see a whole bunch, one of which is the four leaders talking about uh, heaven on earth for printed around PEI. Uh, okay, other comments? Thank you, Dana. Thanks for-, for uh, your, I, I have a very serious question. Oh, the other ones weren't? <laughs> <laughs> Too shit. That's a good one. <laughs> go, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm very curious about this heaven on earth tea. This is good flavor, chamomile, uh, dandelion. No, listen, listen. I want to read to you what she put on the back. If you go to my website, to the the uh, YouTube channel that I I just put on, you'll see an interview with her that I did. And it's hysterical uh, how she started off. All right, where is, where is, uh, bu, 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 hold on. Lady Baker's tea. So this is what she put on the back of the package. Are the earth cultures harmonized in a tea blend where all the flavors marry and complement each other, not one overpowering another and each humbly living in equality? The enclosed blend was inspired by many people's desire to have Prince Edward Island be Canada's first heaven on earth province. Blended with the tea varieties of Assam, oolongs, pai mouton, and herbal peppermint are sweet rose petals from the south shore of PEI, Prince Edward Island. And then she puts my website. I'm so glad I asked that question. I mean, and you can so you can go to her website, Lady Baker's Tea, and buy the tea. <laughs> I'm gonna go to PEI. <laughs> uh, Noel, I'm sorry, but you can't get in. Yeah, of I know. Not. We were there a long time ago. Such a beautiful, beautiful. No, the border, the U.S. Canada border, is closed, and they won't let anyone in from outside the maritime. It, they're, yeah, I think they're going to extend it also. It's supposed to be the end of September, but I should bet it's going to be longer. Yeah, smart. It, did, did you say you're there now? I am. Edward Island? Oh, that's great. Yeah, it is, uh, what time is it? I'm four hours ahead of California, whatever California is. Yeah, it's 1023 for you. Okay. Uh, for Mark. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, two things. First of all, the book. You can uh, buy this on Amazon, Amazon anywhere in the world. And I'm going to ask you, so it's Project Heaven on Earth. I'm going to ask you to buy three books, not one, but three. Why? One for you, one for somebody in your life right now. Think of the person who needs this book in your life right now. People instantly know who that is. That's amazing. And one book for somebody who's going to come into your life that will need it. Okay, so the book is, it's not a, it's not a reading book in the sense of you just get the idea. There are exercises, there's line pages, there's questions, there's quotes, there's examples. I want you to, I wanted this to be like a blueprint for heaven on earth. I don't want you just to have the idea heaven on earth, isn't that wonderful? That's wonderful, but I'm not really interested. I'm interested that you discover what your heaven on earth project is and do that. And let me know so I can tell the rest of the world. In the same way, when I talked about the three women in Portugal or the, the uh, real estate agent or Africa, I have an earth continent, the police officer, a penny a day. Every time one of these amazing examples come out, I talk about it around the world because of what it does to people. It inspires people because the creativity is just, it's off the chart. I, I'm constantly amazed. You know, heaven on earth for... 
I'm still, because I just talked to her a couple days ago, heaven on earth for Portuguese language countries. <laughs> what? Outrageous. Okay. Um, what else do I want to say? Oh, yes. And there is a, you can put this, look, should we go back to the quotes? To the quotes, to the uh, slides, please, Noel. There we go. Okay, let's go to the next one. Noel, you're on, on mute, so I, I can't hear what you're saying. There you go. I clicked it, so it seems to take a little time to get there. Ouska clicked. Yeah. Oh, Dana, you know Jacob and, and uh, Lori. Yes. Yeah, I used to live on the big islands and yeah. <laughs> I interviewed him. Who said that? Oh, Dana, Dana. Oh, I like, please give them my love. They had the Heaven on Earth video contest for three right. or four years. They did, yeah. Lori was, was always talking about Heaven on Earth. Outrageous. They got videos from all around the world. It was so moving what they did. I want them to do it again. Yeah. Thank I you, Dana. That. Give them my love. That that's wonderful. Can we all right go to the next one? There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so in addition, I want to talk about this free seven-day email course and blog. So you get a weekly, you get seven days, first of all, and then you get a weekly blog because I want to make this real for people. I want, think of it like heaven on earth, like a, like a diamond with different facets. So if you get one week, you get it from this perspective. One week, you get it from that perspective. It, it becomes more normalized. I want heaven on earth to be a normalized conversation for people. So I meet, you know, Summer and I get on, well, assuming, Summer and I get on a plane together, I've never met her, she sits beside me, hello, what's your name, Martin Rue, what's your name, Summer Rose, blah, 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 what do you do, Summer, I'm a blah, blah, and Martin, what do you do, I'm a blah, blah, and then I say, Summer, what are you doing to help contribute to heaven on earth? And she has an answer, and she asks me, and I have an answer. I want that in the world. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, the next one. This is outrageous. You're going to love this one. It's called The Case for Heaven on Earth. So I thought, how do we really get this out in the world? When you buy 20 copies of Project Heaven on Earth, whoop, nope. <laughs> she got so excited, she started. <laughs> oh, stop. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Sorry about that. <laughs> When you buy 20 copies of my book and send me a note saying you've done that with a receipt from, from Amazon, I will do one of these webinars for you or I'll do a free consult for you because we want to get this idea spread rapidly out in the world because now is the time, folks. It, it's like enough of the BS, you know, COVID, environmental, nuclear war, blah, blah, political. The game's not working. That's clear, good. The new game has uh, begun. And anyway, one of the things that I didn't talk about is the power of, of agency, of declaration. The way you begin a new story is by saying so. When I started Heaven on Earth, Project Heaven on Earth, I just said, I got it, that's it. It's Project Heaven, it's Heaven, well, it started with Heaven on Earth and it went to Project Heaven on Earth. And people said, what are you, nuts? No one's ever done that. We've never done it. Blah, 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 blah. And I said, the action to begin the creation of the new story is saying so. That's how you start a new story. So I'm asking you if you're willing to say, okay, I'm in. I'm in to co-create heaven on earth. Just put your hand up and say it out loud. That's it. All right. So we've forgotten the agency that we have through our giving our word to help create and co-create the kind of world that our soul deeply longs for. In the days when I used to do, you know, 200, 300 people in a room, got him nostalgic, right? You remember the days when we did that? Uh, I would have, particularly women, women would be crying. And I initially, I saw women sobbing, not crying, sobbing. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? And what the hell was going on was, especially for women, so far, but men are starting, but it's still women mostly, the feminine, the suppressed knowing 
the natural language is a friend of my woman friend of mine said the natural language of women is heaven on earth that's been suppressed depressed within women and when someone comes along and says you know the heaven on earth that you long for now's the time i'm saying so and a bunch of other people all around the world are also getting this message it it ex something explodes in women and so that's a huge force in the world for me. So we're up to a big game and it starts simply. It starts with you saying, okay, that's it. I'm in. And then watch what happens. Watch how it just kind of unfolds. Who, I mean, you think that when I started saying this 30 years ago, I had any idea that any of this would happen? No, it's all still quite remarkable to me, quite amazing. It's my dream come true. People say, you know, how old are you? I'm 73. Well, are you retired? Retired? Well, what the hell are you talking about? I, if I retire, I would do what I'm doing. No, I'm not retired. I can never see me. That's a stupid word for me. That's no meaning. Okay. What else? Uh, Noel, is it available in an ebook? No. Are you doing seminars at, no, not. Are you doing these seminars at businesses? Not yet. I would love to. Dana, bring me into a business. Love to do a business. So the only I did, outlet you sell I did have I did, the only outlet is Amazon, correct? Okay. Um, there was you'll see in the book. Uh, Order at Barnes and Noble. It, what Order at Barnes? No, because it's it's printed by KDL, which is an Amazon. Oh, employee. I that see. That was the easiest. Okay. Um, Dana, there was a man in Austin, Texas, Ray Blanchard, who a training runs a training company, and took the three questions. Actually, added a fourth: What's heaven on earth for our business? and had his board of directors answer those questions. And he said, they're just bawling their eyes out because it just reminded them of why they were here. It's time folks, it is just time. I just okay. asked that because it sounded like you, you came from a business world working with businesses mm -hmm. in the past and wondered if this had extended in, into the... No, the, the what i learned from business is about uh vision and about creating a new story and about getting stuff done well i i do think we need to close it uh, yeah and is it? i know it's late for you we've gone just a little bit over i really appreciate everyone being here this was our inaugural attempt doing this and uh throwing in the power things the Power slide was a little extra for me. That was a new growth. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate uh, the conversation.cc allowing us to have this time. And uh, we have broadcasted on some Facebook pages. We put your contact out there, what you're up to. Bob's also put out there um, the, um, uh, the radish.org and that uh, content. So, um, I'm just so thankful, Martin. I have so enjoyed this. You have just lifted me up and everyone can unmute themselves if you'd like. And um, 